What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the first episode of the 350Z Drift Build. I was gonna do it in the shop, but I figured since the sun's out and shining, might as well enjoy it. So I'm gonna speed wax it in the driveway real quick, then we'll get some shots of the car. We'll go over the build list, you know, the parts that came on the car when I bought it, everything that I've done to the car so far, then we'll throw it up on the lift and uh, we'll get it ready for the drift event this weekend. So let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, before I try and bump this out best I can, uh, let me show you some of the carnage we picked up at the last drift event. <laughs> Got my first tire slap. All up on the fender wheel there. I don't know how well you can see it, but took off my rear bumper flap, uh, my rear mud flap. Tore out these two plastic rivets for the scuds, side skirt right there. Door slapped her all the way up to almost to the door handle. And Knocked in my blinker, busted up my blinker mounts. But uh, that's all right, we'll zip tie those. The only thing I'm really bummed out about is the mud flap. That's why I cut the bumper this specific way that I did, because I like the look of them. So that's how I kept them. Anyways, I'm gonna try to buff this out the best we can and then we'll get some shots of the car. This Lucas Oil Speed Wax is taking this rubber off actually really good. It was really bad right here. I mean, it did take good couple chips out of my paint but drift car <laughs> keep buffing this out and that Lucas oil does pretty freaking good at taking this rubber off I don't even need no rubber remover impressive That sucks, my freaking rubber band snapped while I was waxing. Shit. Hooking me up with some hooks on my trailer. <laughs> Old F 15 puts in the work. <laughs> Alright, now back to the video. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown of everything on the car off the top of my head. Then I'm gonna pull out my book. Um, 
and we'll go from there with everything just because I want to get everything right um, on this video so you guys know where the car is at and what's been done and everything um, I keep a book we call it the book of speed I got it from my dad he keeps one too mine's a lot more intense than his but we keep all our notes and just everything about all our vehicles in that book so we can always get back to it and know what we were doing and um, yeah it's pretty sick I, mine I keep everything from like build parts to tie orders to just everything <laughs> I'm a little bit crazy in OCD but let's dive into this so first things first parts that came on the car I don't know about the exhaust it is quiet but uh, the air intakes came with the car I'm not sure what they are but I'll probably keep those for a little while. Um, the goal is to LS swap this car in the future. But anyways, for first off, so I swapped the radiator hoses with Mishimoto radiator hoses. We got the Mishimoto uh, thermostatic coolant uh, plate in there, but you can't see it. Um, pulled out the AC condenser, put in the Mishimoto radiator after pulling out the stock one, put the Mishimoto oil cooler in. The C trab, I can't remember how many rows it is. It's a 13 row. Um, power steering cooler kit. Got the Mission Motor lines that came with it. They were actually too long, so I had to take them to, I believe the place was called Eric's House of Hoses in Ogden. They cut it and were able to use the original fittings and everything, which is sweet. To go along with that, we got the uh, Mission Motor thermostatic oil plate in there as well. So it doesn't, you know, cool down oil until it needs to be cooled. Uh, I got the, I can't remember where I got this bash bar from, but we'll go over the whole parts list later. I believe I got it from Njuku. Uh, those wheels came on the car. I got these Advin ones from Fitment Industries. I bought four of them for drift sets, and then I still have the stock set, so I have three sets for the rear. And then I have stripped and gutted the whole rear of the car. Looks pretty good for the hydro. We ran the lines back through here, um, drilled it, fastened it right into there. Then we um, drilled through the wheel well, wrapped the line in a bunch of Gorilla tape, and then we uh, I took some silicone, going, silicone gasket maker and just kind of sealed it off. That's been solid through the gnarly tire pops that I've had. Nothing's tore up the uh, brake line, so that's been good. Inside the car, I have tore out the radio, all the AC controls, all the airbags are gone, the airbag computer that's underneath the dash is gone, I pulled all that out, put the GK Tech Hydro in, got a GK long shifter, um, grip royal wheel, I will be putting all my grip royal, I will, uh, let me start over with that, I want to put grip royals in all my cars eventually, that is the plan, uh, I've got this one signed by Chelsea, hell yeah, um, Got the uh, Street Faction uh, fire extinguisher mount down there. I also have a Street Faction bash bar on the rear. That's where this one came from. I love the Street Faction products. Tight. I will continue to buy from them in the future. I've also stripped everything off the rear back here. So these bumpers are just mounted by zip ties. And when that tire blew up and was slapping, only one zip tie has remained. That's pretty tight. Um, we'll get into all the diff stuff when I get my parts list out. Um, I've cut the fuses for the driving assist and traction control. I can't remember what exact ones they are, but in this fuse box, you pop that open, you just snip them, put them back in, and you're ready to slide. These things are kind of hand hard one-handed. <laughs> oh no. There we go. Um, I've stripped everything out the front end, so the window washer fluids, that's all gone. All the lines are gone for that. Pulled everything I could off, including the horns, freed the whole front end up for airflow and the cool those um, radiators. And I uh, lost where I was going. There's more I wanted to get to. Give me one sec. <laughs> oh, yeah. Installed the Mishimoto catch can kits two of them is a dual can kit that was interesting to put on for my first oil can kit but we got it figured out got it on um, I know there's more than I'm missing but I can't think of it at the moment <laughs> but yeah we'll get this thing I'll get my parts list out and we'll go over it and uh, get you guys up to date with the car 
All right, let's go over the parts list. I'll try to make this as you know not boring as possible, but I got three pages of parts that I've freaking bought for this car so far. So I'm gonna start with a couple of things first that we already showed. Um, sorry, I'm not gonna be looking at the camera. I'm just gonna be reading this stuff down from my book. But uh, so the Mishimoto Mishimoto oil cooler kit, the Mishimoto uh, performance aluminum radiator, Mishimoto silicone hose kit. For the, all the radiator hoses, uh, Mishimoto baffled oil catch can kit, specifically for the HR engine. Uh, Mishimoto heavy duty transmission cooler with electric fan. I have not yet put that on the car. Um, we'll be doing that in the future in one of these future build episodes. Uh, Street Faction Engineering rear bash bar with all the options. I love that company. I will continue to buy for them. Um, then I got the Injuku Racing Limited, Limitless Auto Fab Front Bash Bar. I have no problem with that bar, but I do want to change it to the, uh, oh, I can't think of the name right now. Uh, oh, True Focus. Yeah, I want to, I want to get rid of that uh, Injuku Bash Bar and get a True Focus Fab. I love those. I think they look so good. Those are what I'm going to put on the front end of my S13s as well. Well, I don't know about the 89 because we're going to do a tubeless front end, but anyways, back to this car. <laughs> um, we got a Z1 Motorsports Fair Lady Z shift knob. I actually took that out. It was too short. I wanted this longer GK Tech one. So that's gone now. Um, the Diberti Design Grim Reaper Clear Anodized Polished Aluminum um, Hydro Brake. I decided not to put that in. I'll probably put a picture in real quick so you guys can see it in the car, but it was just too big and I didn't want to cut all my interior to this shit. I already cut this a little bit for it to fit in and mine's got the two piece so it's kind of funky now because I didn't cut it big enough but um yeah after that we got the Mishimoto racing thermostat which is on there which is the sandwich plate for the oil cooler kit and then we've got the Mishimoto uh, maybe that was for the you know, the, the racing thermostat, that's for the radiator on the front. Well, I can't show you, it's too tucked into the engine bay. And then I've got the Mishimoto aluminum coolant reserve tank, the radiator overflow. I don't know, I don't think I'm putting that on the car yet. Um, GK Tech Z33 braided hydraulic e brake line kit, which is the line that I ran through the trunk and through the rear wheels. Um, the GK Tech Z33 bolt on dual caliper brackets, the GK Tech 10 millimeter axle spacers, we got that all on. Um, the Concept Z Performance KB Carbon Fiber Rear Wiper Delete Cap Kit. So this is one thing I was, I was waiting to bring up on the list because I'm not happy about this. I don't know how this came off of it already. I mean, I barely even watched this car, you know, drift car, but the carbon fiber off of that delete cap right there is peeled off. And I have no idea why it's peeled off that fast and early. It really sucks. I'm not happy about that. but. Uh, is what it is. I mean, the top one still looks good. I got that from a different company, I'm pretty sure, though. But, uh, yeah, after that, then we go with the Concept Z rear. No, I got it from the same people. Uh, it's Concept Z Performance, the Z Spec rear washer nozzle delete kit, which is that top black one that I just showed you guys. Um, sorry, I'm trying to record this and read. <laughs> trying not to make it as too boring, but I'm sure it is. Sorry, guys. But just, I just want to get all this out for all the cars first before we start building so you guys know where they're at, you know. But um, anyways, let's keep going with this. Got the uh, Njuka Racing Torque Solution Billet Bumper Quick Release Kit Combo. Those are on the front. That's that rubber band that just snapped. I got a couple more. I'll put a new one on when we get down to the garage. Um, Concept Z Performance uh, Power Steering Cooler Upgrade Kit, which is that 13 row C-Trab core on the front next to the Mishimoto one. Um, then we got the Grip Royal, I bought from Grip Royal, the NRG Quick Release. This nice golden brown one. Um, it's the Quick Release V2, if anybody is curious. Uh, the brown and gold. Then I got the Grip Royal Brute Steering Wheel uh, in suede. That's why I don't like to touch it too much with my gloves on. Um, then we got the Grip Royal Horn Button, the Never Lift Button. I like that. <laughs> I got some sweet ones for the S13s. I'll show, I'll show those in the future when we get to those car builds. But uh, then we got the uh, Grip Royal Nissan Newer Era by NRG Steering Hub, which is 
that. The bigger black piece in the back. Um, then we got the Z1 Motorsports Stop Tech 350Z G37 Sport Brake Pads because they fit the uh, Alcabanos that I have in the car. Uh, finally for page two. Then we got the Z1 Motorsports OEM Rear Alcabano Brake Caliper Kit, left and right. Dude, those were expensive. <laughs> 250 bucks per caliper and the, just the, the gray. The red ones were like an extra 250 bucks, so I had to say no. Um, the Z1 Motorsports, let me show you those real quick, how all that stuff turned out really good. Because I've heard that you're supposed to run the same si you know, the same calipers back here, which I am not, so I'll look into that. I'll figure that out, but I mean, it looks pretty good in there. I don't know if you guys can see it because I have my screen flipped towards me, but... Um, then we have the Z1 Motorsports High Capacity Differential Cover Kit and the Bell Race Works 350Z G35 Rear Differential Brace. Dif differential brace. You need that because these things are really only held back together. That diff is really only held up by one bolt. So you get that diff brace right there. And it bolts it up into the subframe as well, which gives it um, a lot more stoutness, makes it a lot more stable and uh, less likely of breaking the one stud that's actually holding the diff up. But that is the high capacity diff cover and the brace. And then I have as well, I got the, hold on, I gotta find back where I was at. <laughs> Sorry guys. After that I have the solid differential bushing set. So I can't show you the ones that are actually on the diff, but that's the one that goes into the subframe. That big circle piece right there. That was not fun to install. But after putting those in and welding the diff, oh man, did that change the car completely. This thing loves being sideways now. I love this car. Um, after that, we've got the Z1 Motorsports uh, Z1350Z G35 aluminum subframe bushing collars. I have not put those in yet. We're gonna be doing that soon here in a future uh, build video. Um, I've got the Z1 Motorsports um, high lift hood struts. I have not installed those yet. We'll be doing that soon as well. Then I got the Z1 front toe strap in red. So that's one that I wanted to get to because that one, so since I took off the bumper supports, they were on the bash bar. There's the stock Z hook, toe hook. Well, it, like it mounts like somewhere right in there, just screws in, and that's what this is supposed to screw into. So we took the bash bar bolt and we just drilled through there, man, and it was a pain in the ass. But we drilled through it, and um, I don't know if you can see it, but we got a big old bolt on the back of it. I'm trying to see if I can show you where it's at, but. Yeah, big old bolt on there. It just barely fits, but yeah, it works and it's stout. And I, I think it looks really good. Adds that little bit of custom ability. I like that little personal touch. I think it looks real good in the front. And then we've got the rear tow hook is the next thing on the list. Buy my tow hooks together. So the next one was the Sparco Universal Tow Strap. And that one was, you know, a quick, easy install because these awesome street faction rear bash bars I had the mounts built in for them so that I just threw the sparko on right there and uh, works out good i think they look great uh, next on the list after that is the street faction engineering uh fire extinguisher seat mount for the 350z which my book is in the way they showed that earlier yeah real nice um I, that fire extinguisher is actually out of date and it's the only one that'll fit the mount but Back behind the seat here, I have uh, my other fire extinguisher, just in case. <laughs> it's too fat to fit the mounts for that thing. I gotta get a different mount for it, but uh, it's just the one they sent me. Then I have Diff Tech, Diff Tech gasket differential rear cover. I put the new gasket in when I uh, welded the diff, and uh, so far I've flushed the fluid out of there twice now to get all the metal pieces out, and I think we're good to rock now. It's been solid, stout, perfect, perfection. Um, after that, we got the GK Tech Z33 350Z car specific e brake mount, which you can't see, but it bolts into the shifter bolts right there. So it's a pretty quick, easy install. That you just got to cut up your uh, center console or whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. Or you can weld it to your tunnel like most normal people do. <laughs> but that's the quick, easy way. Um, 
after that we've got the Fitment Industries Avid AV, AV6 Avid 1 bronze wheels that I bought in 18, 18.5 by 35 um, for drift, drift sets. I want to get another couple sets so I can run them on the front as well because I really like the look of them. Um, after that I got the Z1 Motorsports is where I got it from, the JWT clutch and flywheel kit for the VQ35HR as well as the JWT 350Z G35 VQ35HR heavy duty HD slave cylinder and the stainless steel insulated clutch line I could not run that because I believe he said that this is an inst because I can't install clutches I don't have the parts to do it so I believe he said this is an internal line and that's an external so that's why I couldn't run the line unfortunately but then also I got the uh, manual pilot bushings as well from Z1 Motorsports and the whole transmission works really well. I think there is a slight um, throw up bearing noise though because when it's hot if, if the clutch is out it kind of sounds like engine knock but it's the clutch because as soon as you put it in the clutch it's quiet but other than that no complaints. The clutch is solid like I beat the shit out of it and it's perfect. Um, the the uh, you know reviews and stuff I read on the clutch really good and so Apparently it's a clutch kicking, abuse taking, great clutch. So if you're in the market for one for your 350, pick up one of those. They're really good. Um, then I got the, oh, we're moving on to the third page. Ooh, we're almost through this build so far. All right. So we got the uh, GK Tech Z3. Oh, I had to buy another brake mount because um, the Brad the Birdie one that I was going to put didn't want to fit. So I got another mount for it but then I got the uh, the V2 hydraulic e-brake assembly and handle from uh, GK Tech which is this red handle on the brace kit so then I got the Will Wood standalone 3 4th which is I have three of those now for my other Brad the Birdie ones it's just kind of the size I've gone with maybe I should try a smaller one maybe it'll help with the initial pump I don't know but then I got the GK Tech extra long um, step neural gear knob in red. I think it looks really good. I think it goes with the theme in here. It's really nice. And last but not least, I got the from Z1 Motorsports the four OEM VQ35HR camshaft position sensors because the engine light did go on like two events ago, so I had to replace those before last event. But the car has been solid. Um, now that we got through all that boring stuff, if I've missed anything that I've done to the car other than the parts, because that's the whole part list, but if I miss anything that I've done to the car, I will just throw it up on the video in like little word titles, whatever. But yeah, let's take this thing down to the garage. We'll get it on the lift. We'll go over what we need to do before the event this Saturday, and, uh, and we'll go shredding. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. I've been wanting to make these build episodes for a long time. Um, got a lot of cars to do it with, so should be good oh one thing I wanted to add real quick before we go down there um, so these bumpers when I cut these bumpers both the front and the rear the only thing I had to do it was a 12 inch hard wood, hardwood ruler and uh, some blue tape and a sharpie I mean it was first cut on each side I mean it's a little jagged but I think they came out really good for you know first cut each side threw them on they fit over the bash bar and everything. I was actually really hyped about that. <laughs> but hell yeah, let's get into it. Let's get it down there on the lift for you guys. Alright, so for the to-do list to get this car ready for the drift event. Um, I don't have to change your oil. I changed the oil before the last event. But uh, we're gonna change the coolant, put it back in the water wetter. I do run engine ice, so it doesn't have the same chemicals that eat up the pavement like regular uh, coolant. But I just do the water wetter so I don't have to have any problems at any events. But um, yeah, we'll get that back in. Check all the fluids. I gotta get some tires mounted. And, but first we'll get this thing up on the lift so you guys can see underneath it. First time and then uh, get working. Probably won't get it all done today, but we'll get this uh, all done over the course of this week before the drift event. We'll be in this video, so let's get into it. I'll give you guys a good quick look underneath this car.
Yeah, I've stripped everything back here. That's where the brace bolts in. It's all diff mounts. Um, that's where I couldn't show you earlier. The other diff mounts that go in here. Elephant ears or whatever you call them. But yeah, it's not too much rust under here. Pretty straight car. Really clean. 80,000 miles. Good pickup. Got the oil cooler kit. Was able to keep the original mounts. Oh. She's looking pretty good. Right, let's get these front tires swapped. That's one of the things on the to-do list. Swap over the front tires because they're pretty uh pretty hashed up after only two events. So we're gonna swap those around. And uh We'll get into the rest of it this week. I'm just gonna try to get the tires done today. Get the coolant done tomorrow when I get off work. I gotta go do some adult shit still. I gotta go finish my laundry. I go to bed early on these days. I work four days a week now. I get up at 3 a.m. for work, so. But it's nice, the three-day weekends work out great. Give me the drift days off and uh, give me time to edit, film, and work my car, so. It's working out good. So when you jack up the 350s in the front, on the rears, I just use these spots right here with this list, but the jack points for the front are these things. Uh, right here, you can't really tell because I got the, uh, I got it all set up, but there's these two little rings. And right on there is where you want to set the blocks and jack it up. <laughs> that won't cause any damage. As you can see, after two events, they're already a little bit hashed up, so this side's thin on this side, the other tire's thin on the outside, so we're going to swap them over. But man, these tires have been putting in work, they have been great, it's so nice to have some stickies up front. Changes the game entirely. <laughs> Let's get that other one up. See this one. Yeah, we're just gonna swap them over. Try to make the life last as long as we can out of these fronts. The stickier the rubber, the more expensive they are, but cars looking good. Yeah, we're gonna put a new rubber band all over down here. <laughs> Can't have that. Yeah, my dad was trying to help me out, but I don't really need any help. That's <laughs> some simple stuff. I can tell he's bored because he's down here. <laughs> so if you watch this, you're, you can hang out anytime, Pops. I love you, man. <laughs> you know what it's like being bored sometimes. I like working on cars, so I come down here and I do my thing. <laughs> Let's get these swapped on. Hey, just wanted to say if you guys are liking the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that. Support your boy. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to catch all the build episodes that are coming up on all these vehicles, I'm missing a couple in that lineup. Uh, the Prelude, the F-150, and the Jixxer will also have their own build episodes. Stay tuned for all those. Those are coming up. But let's get back into this build. All right. So got the front tire swapped over. Um, Got the tires out that I need to get mounted. Pop these ones. Went through that one. Though we did not use this tire at the last trip event. That one's still brand new. So I got three tires to mount. The ones that are on them are still pretty fresh. I only did a couple laps on these ones. So we'll take those. We'll run those. We'll swap these up. We'll get those going. I'm going to go load those up in the truck. Take them to my tire guy. We'll get them swapped. 
so be ready. Um, that's all I'm gonna do today, really. I got a lot of stuff to do this still today before I go to bed for work tomorrow, but I'll catch you guys tomorrow when I get off work. Tomorrow we'll uh, check all the fluids, we'll drain the coolant, we'll get everything loaded up, and then probably end the video tomorrow. My 350's out of the way, I wanted to show off my new Tire Streets Drift Challenge banner. Finally got me a banner. <laughs> right in my row of cars. Alright, back up at my house. Uh, about to load these freshies up. The fresh meats. <laughs> I love getting fresh meats, baby. Shout out Tire Streets. About to break into my fresh stack of rubbers, man. We're only going to use three out of the twelve for this event, but... Uh, I don't know if we'll use them all either. I'm gonna try and go pick up uh, one of those water sprayers for like bug spray and weed spray and shit too so we can fill that up with water to take to the track so I can help manage my tires. But anyways, um, yeah, the reason why we had to leave the last strip vent early and why there's still rubber on those two rear tires is because I had to get my dad home in time for him to dip for LS Fest. Um, if you guys haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out. Got a lot of sick footage up there, man. The limo drum, gym, drift competition, some gnarly drag racing, do wall tapping and 100 plus miles an hour, all sorts of stuff, man. So make sure you guys check that shit out. Also, all the footage of my dad's badass Z06 freaking LS7 heaven, baby. Beast of a car. Anyways, I'm gonna get these tires loaded up and I'll uh, see you guys in just a sec. All right. Got all the tires loaded up. At the head of my tire guy, that's the culprit. The tire slapped the shit out of my car, if you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> but anyways, um, I thought I'd just add in real quick since it is the build video. Um, I run, since I buy from Tire Streets, just so you guys are aware, I run the any of the PHIs in the rear. Doesn't matter which run, I run the PHIR, the PHI, or the PHI2. I can't really tell the difference between grip or tire life. But I do run the 651 Sports, all accelerate tires. I run the 651 Sports 200 Treadwear up front, and man, those are incredible tires. I really enjoy them. If I had a little bit more horsepower, I'd run them on the rear too, but uh, right now we just run these uh, PHIs. They're 400 Treadwear, but they feel like, I don't know, like 360. Unless they're warm, like they do grip pretty well. Not as much slide-by as I'd like, but they're great tires for my little horsepower car. And with the stickies up front, it's just, you have so much control in the drift, it's amazing. Still easy to over-rotate without the angle kit yet, and these little slippier tires, but anyways, we're gonna take these up to the tire guys, my tire guy, and uh, see you guys tomorrow. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, anybody who wants to get into drifting, the 350Z is an amazing platform to do so. It's a cheap car, and they handle great. The only thing you really need to do is weld the diff and uh, cut those fuses, and you're ready to rock. But anyways, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Got my tires ready. Taking three sets. Um, decided not to change the coolant. We'll change the coolant after this event when I get some time on the weekend before the two big events uh, next month. But 350 is ready. Checked all the fluids, checked the tire pressures. She's good to go. Hell yeah. So we'll do another build video when I, after the next drift event. We'll slap on some of these parts I got for the 350 in here. We'll probably put on the hood struts and uh. Take a look at the subframe colors maybe. That's gonna be a big job. I'll we'll probably put on the Mishimoto uh, radiator overflow kit too. But uh, man, quite the stack of used tires already over here. <laughs> After win. Oh, this one we had to cut off. That one completely folded. But yeah, after winter I will uh, go through all these and pick all the remounts like this one. and. Recycle all the rest Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, sorry. I'm cutting it short. I just figured it's long enough already But if you guys like the content like subscribe comment all that appreciate it. Love seeing it. Love talk uh, Commenting back. Love talking to you guys. It's really cool Oh, yeah, and if you guys haven't checked out my footage from the last two drift events Make sure you guys go check those out a lot of action man <laughs> Some good stuff. I was on the uh, Rudy. I was right behind Rudy the not the last one, but the one before. And I also almost took out of me automatically missed about like this much. So some good footage, man. Go check it out. See you guys next time.